Another episode of 60 Exchange Moments presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Today we are joined by Corliss Williamson, who is going to break down the 1994 national title as Arkansas Razorbacks won. He knew how to keep a secret when he had to. There's no doubt about it. Right, right. No doubt. <laughs> That's funny about that. I, I, I moved off campus my junior year, and I, the first shooting slump I went through, Coach, Coach Anderson was like, man, that's why I told you don't move out of the dorm. That dorm made you the man you are today. <laughs> like, oh, I had that game, Coach. I had that game. <laughs> what, <All right. laughs> what was uh, in that locker? What, who were the, 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 the leaders for you guys, that 94 national championship team? We talked about how mature that you guys were, but not so much who was the loudest voices. Mm -hmm. you probably figure out who – who some of those guys were, but <laughs> right. <laughs> the readers were, when things got rough that, you know, you had to step up and, and, and uh, take control. You know, I, I right off the bat, Corey Beck and, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, Coach Richardson said, it, I believe if you ask anyone on that team, who was our leader, who was the guy that really pulled us together and got us going in rough times, it would be Corey Beck. Um, you know, it didn't matter if you were the last guy on the bench or, you know, one of the starters. If you felt you weren't giving it your all, he'd speak up and say something. There were times he, he got on to me. But the beauty of it was we all held each other accountable. And it wasn't personal. You know, and that, I think that was one of the things that that team, that made that team special. So Corey could yell at me. I could yell at Corey. Um, vice versa. Me and Scotty could get into it. But no one took it personal. We knew it was about what was best for the team. And we continue to fight and play for one another, and that was that's what made our team special. What what, what was uh, off the court like with, with you guys? What, what what was like relaxing downtime? Because uh, you seemed pretty close to me. Yeah. You know, watch you know just kind of watching you guys, even when you got together for certain events. What what uh, a lot of a lot of high stakes Uno going on down. <laughs> Or tunk, as they used to play, a lot of tunk games, a lot of uh, a lot of dominoes, uh, spades, stuff like that. But no, yeah. we spent a lot of time together off the court, and yeah. that that was uh again that was another thing that made our group special because um, regardless of what was going on in class or on the court, when, when things when all that was over, you couldn't find you know just one player by itself off somewhere. Majority of the time, you see two or three together, or you see us all together as a group. Right. So um, that was uh, that that made that group special. That made that the time that we spent up there uh, special. And even now, if we haven't seen each other for months or years on, when we get together, you know, it's just like we've never left. It's that we still have that bond. So one of the <clears throat> this a documentary should be made about this. You guys. OK, now in this day and age, I see you got the swoosh. I got a swoosh. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to swoosh. Everybody wants to jump, man. Everybody. I love, I love Adidas. I'm starting to become a Puma guy. Shout out to Puma. Oh, nice. <laughs> you guys were Apex. Come on, Big Nasty. What was the discussion? <laughs> so for those of you who don't remember Apex, like anybody <laughs> right now who's 40 and over, even Razorback fans, probably mm -hmm. have an Apex, you know, jacket or a uh, uh, what, what were you guys, in the locker room? What were you guys saying to each other when 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 they're handing out Apex? When Coach Stella goes, "Here's your Apex, guys, get them." Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know what? To be honest with you, man, we didn't even think anything about it. I mean, because Coach is always like going against the grain, doing his own thing. Like we wore the Converse, and we really didn't like the shoes, but we wore Converse. That I mean, that was our shoe. That was his shoe of choice. That was so good. We wore Converse. Yeah. We had some Apex uniforms. I think, uh, what was the other one? Bell or something like that it was one of the uniforms. Hey, so, hey, no, no, no hating on Apex. If they're listening, no. if they're around anymore. No. We can still get a bunch of Apex gear so, somewhere in the storage <laughs> unit. <laughs> right, right. But no, the Apex was cool because all of a sudden, you know, we came in one day, we had those big long baggy shorts and we were in heaven. Then we we're like, okay, we'll roll with this. <laughs> <laughs> What the – so I think people will forget once you start getting into, like, on-the-court strengths. It's funny. I, I listen to people and what they think 
you guys did so well to be not only the greatest team that year, but the greatest that, that ever threw on a uniform for, for the Hogs. What do you think were the strengths of that team in 94? And, and of course, 95, you guys were obviously right there. Uh, but what was the, the strengths on the floor that you guys uh, brought? Uh, I think, like, our basketball IQ as a whole yeah. was, was, was a big strength for us. Um, just recognizing situations on the court. I thought we passed and shared the ball mm -hmm. uh, with one another. So, I mean, of course, Scott and I were leading scorers, but, you know, it, it wasn't anything for Corey to have a big game and have 20 or, or Clint to have a big game or Dwight. And the fact that we were – our basketball IQ was high and we shared the basketball and then we were versatile. You know, guys can move around to different spots on the floor. It wasn't like we just had – centers that just had to stay inside you know they could pop right. outside and shoot or drive or make the pass from the perimeter as well as our guards like Corey could post up Scotty could post somebody at times so just our versatility and IQ to me was a strength that made us um they gave us the opportunity to be successful I'll say I'll say that like the two best passing teams that I saw and apologies to like some of Eddie Sutton's teams the, you know with Sydney and those guys mm -hmm. But when I watch like game tape of Todd, they Lee Mayberry's teams and, and, and how it, they whipped it around the perimeter quick. Nobody held on to it. And then watching your teams, you were the best passing team in the country, which allowed you guys to be a great shoot. It was just like everybody's perception, 40 minutes of hell. Oh, you must have had great athletes. Right. You must have had this. <laughs> it's like, no, they were the smartest team, the best. You remember Coach Rich always say, decisions, decision making. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you guys were the smartest team, the best passing team. Obviously, you could shoot it, but you understood rotations defensively. And yeah, Corey Beck and Clint McDaniel will eat anybody up in the backcourt. Right. To me, it was just um, you, you guys, the basketball IQ people just never gave you enough credit. Uh, and actually, wasn't that leading to the Duke game? Coach almost tore somebody's head off, of suggesting that you guys didn't have that, that level of understanding the game. Yeah, I know. I remember that one commentator saying that the, the smartest team was going to win picking Duke. And I was just like, wow, what is this? You know, like we, we know about, no, we know how to play basketball as well. So, um, but I, I was excited and happy that we won just for that reason. One of the, that was one of the main reasons why. And also for coach to get credit for what he's done, what he had done in Arkansas and, and throughout his coaching career. Before we continue that interview, I just have to let you guys know that it is that time of year again. We have waited two years for this moment, and it is finally here. March's biggest tournament is back. Gonzaga's getting ready to run the table. Slippers are being fit as we speak. And our partners over at DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app, are putting our listeners at the center of the action. How? If you bet $4 on an underdog in a select game this week and that underdog wins, you win $256. That's right, $256. Here's how it works. You download the app now. You use the promo code FIELD68 when you sign up. Scroll through the list of select underdogs, bet $4 on one of them to win, and cash $256 when they do. There is no better way for you to put your college hoops knowledge to the test, and then to put your money where your mouth is with DraftKings Sportsbook. It's safe, it's secure, it's reliable. You can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. I know this because I use them. So remember, the code is FIELD68. That's FIELD68 to turn $4 into $256. For a limited time only, you must be 21 years or older. Restrictions apply. Go to DraftKings.com for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. So when you win, now you guys win Sweet 16 Elite Eight, that Final Four, that mentality, was did it change? Were you now, obviously you guys had a bigger goal in mind. But was it business as usual heading into Charlotte? Or was it sort of like, okay, we, we've got to make sure that, you know, we're accepting what's going on here. And, and how did you guys handle that, all the attention? Same thing. Like, Coach just he found a way to keep us focused. You know, um, the song, Ain't No Stopping Us Now. And he kept playing that every day during practice. We want to warm up. Oh, yeah. Um, I heard the So when yeah. he's playing – 
So he blares through the speakers during practice. Nobody's going to, what is it? Nobody's going to stop us now, which is like yeah. some kind of a disco song, isn't it? From the 70s. Yeah, ain't no stopping us ain't now. Ain't no yeah. stopping us. Now, what, I mean, <laughs> this is the <laughs> 90s. What are you thinking? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> you know, but it's so crazy, though. Like, when he first played it, we were just like, what is he doing? But the more he played and the more he played, you look around, guys are warming up or stretching, singing the song, moving around. Yeah. And before you know it, you know, he's planting that subliminal message in your mind. It's like, hey, we're on a mission. Ain't no stopping us now. And that's the mentality that we took. You know, once we made it to the Final Four, it's like, okay, we're here. We're not just going to celebrate, you know, being in the Final Four and be happy if we lose and go home. No, we're here to make to accomplish a mission. And nobody's going to stop us at this moment. So that, that was our mindset. Um, I don't think we even – I didn't even notice all the hoopla around us until after we won. Right. You know, because during that time, we were just so focused. You know, you're at practice. You're back at the hotel. You're hanging out with your teammates or whatever. We may have went off to the mall or something just to waste some time. But we stayed focused on the goal that we were there to accomplish. And, um, you know, Coach did a good job of keeping us that way. So I'm, I've been licking my chops, wanted to ask you this question. Uh, you, you guys, uh -oh. play, you guys play Arizona in the semifinal game. Damon Stoudemire, mm -hmm. they had a ta real talented team. Uh, a bunch of athletes, Reggie Geary, right on that mm -hmm. team. And big boy Blair right. on that team. Blair, yeah. And then, uh, of course, you play Duke with Grand Hill, and um, you put. I think was Oklahoma State the other Final Four, right? With Big Country. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's just. No, take no, that was the year before. That was the year before. It was uh, Florida. That's right, with the meat hook. Florida. Demetrius yeah, the meat hook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's take let's take even Florida just just for this answer. You, uh, uh, Arizona, Dukies, put you guys put you in the tournament this year. How bad do you beat Gonzaga by? I mean, come on now. Like, <laughs> so with all these people talking, the game has changed. Thirty years, blah blah blah. How, how how would you think that you guys would do in the tournament this in 2021? Of course, you know I'm gonna say we're gonna win it. <laughs> we, we beat them. We beat any team right now. But you know it is hard. Like the game has changed. You know with so much emphasis on the three point line, um, the hand checking rules. Like you know that's probably a big move, one it, for you guys. That that would that would be the the one that would probably hurt us. So. I, I would question this. Can we move – if we're moving us to their era of refereeing or we're moving them back to our era of refereeing? But for those listening, <laughs> I just want to let everybody know that maybe there were a lot of teams in the 90s that don't play like teams today, but your team, my team, I went back and looked. You guys shot – almost close to 40%, high 30% of your shots on the three-point line. So didn't my team. We were few and far between. Now you mm -hmm. have, instead of having 20 to 25 teams 30 years ago, you've got more like 100 teams doing it. Right. So that's, that's why when people are making comparisons, I say, just watch. Hop in a tape of that 94 team, 95 team. Mm -hmm. And you tell me, uh, uh, they didn't have big Dwight Stewart. He, he can do Step out and hit a three. Colas Williamson could run the floor. He could defend the post at six, seven. Then he could step out and hit a three and lead the break. Big nasty and lead the break. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. So anyway, I get I get obviously passionate about you know I get, I'm gray in the hair now, so so I got to defend all the other gray hair. <laughs> okay, right on. I yeah, appreciate it. Uh, all right, last thing before I, I want to ask you one one other question. Um, we're almost done. So the celebration, you win it. I know you guys, oh, well, from what I heard, you know how to have a good time as a group. <laughs> how, how, like, what happens in Charlotte? I mean, you can give me the PG version. Right. Because you might have some family members watching this. Right. <laughs> no, man, it was... It was exciting. I mean, we came back. By the time we got off the hotel, it literally took us 15, 20 minutes to get from the bus to our room. Like, all of the fans that were there at the hotel, it was just – it was crazy. Like, 
How long I've did you have your uniform seen... on for? Wow. You must for a little while. Yeah, 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 I had it on for a I while. I know you took your shirt off, though, probably, but you probably had your shirt nah, on. No, no, no. I wasn't like J.R. Smith. No, I kept my shirt on, but, you know, we get back to the room, and then it's, you know, it's crazy. You know how we are. As, as college students, we were hanging out in each other's rooms up all night, and I promised, I think we had to get up that morning at 6 or maybe 7, Scotty and I, to do a uh, – Oh. Was it was it Greg Gumble or one of the guys that did a morning show? Right. And I think I had just went to bed at like four. Ooh. Or maybe it was even five. Five that morning. So I had to be there at six, man. And I know Scott, I think Scotty nudged me, said, Hey man, come on, we gotta go. <laughs> and before I knew it, I dozed off and popped back up and they had to pan me in because I came to the interview <laughs> for about <laughs> five or ten minutes late. <laughs> Hey, you <laughs> earned it. You earned it. <laughs> <laughs>